Dinosaurs have been extinct for 65 million years. But in the jungles of Central America, there's a world still inhabited by prehistoric looking reptiles. they stir. Green iguanas, dressed up with artificial helmets and extra scales, were once cast as dinosaurs in B-movies. They're not, in fact, direct descendants of the dinosaurs, but even so, some scientists now believe that the social lives of the modern iguanas may show us how the dinosaurs behave. This jungle has a black lagoon. And in the center is an island, the starting point of these iguanas' epic story. After three months buried in their eggs, baby green iguanas burst out ready to go. We know from fossils that some baby dinosaurs hatched from communal nests. But what happened next? First, iguana babies dig their way up to the surface. Instantly alert, they emerge into a dangerous world. Hundreds break out from different clutches over several days. Instead of striking out alone, the babies form peer groups, unexpected behavior for primitive reptiles. They taste each other, forging social bonds that may help them survive a risky start. One iguana takes the lead, the others follow. They need to get to cover urgently. Here, their green color is no camouflage. The basilisk lizard, a flesh eater like prehistoric T. rex, here to intercept the passing herd. Dramas like this, between reptile, predator and prey, have been played out for millions of years. Like T-Rex, the basilisk runs down his quarry on strongly muscled back legs. Instinctively, the babies head for water. Their scaly feet trap air bubbles that act like stepping stones, so they can literally walk on water. This is just the first of many dangers that threaten the babies. The next is starvation. There's not enough food on the island. To find food and shelter, they'll have to swim for it across the Black Lagoon.
In the mainland jungle, adult green iguanas roam the treetops. It seems a precarious lifestyle for such heavyweights, nearly two meters long and weighing up to 13 and a half kilos. And yet they spend much of their lives balancing 30 meters or more above the ground. These claws may look as if they're made for ripping flesh, but they're not meat hooks. They're grappling irons. In the movies, green iguanas often played fearsome, meat-eating dinosaurs, but in real life, they're strictly vegetarian. Iguanas made it big by eating up their greens, just like the extinct plant-eating dinosaurs. But sheer size is not enough to keep the carnivores at bay. Birds are descended from dinosaurs. Their scaly feet and talons betray their ancestry. A migrating red-tailed hawk is strong enough to snatch an adult green iguana from the canopy. Green iguanas have exceptional eyesight and acute hearing. And there's a reason why they like to hang out above water. Iguanas are the ultimate base jumpers. inflating their lungs to cushion the impact, and thanks to an incredibly tough hide, they can free fall 30 meters. Like its movie look-alike, Godzilla, it's surprisingly at home underwater. skin is watertight, and this long tail, used as a counterbalance in the canopy, becomes a powerful propeller. But the green iguana has yet another escape strategy, as extraordinary as anything in the movies. It can slow down its heart rate, saving oxygen and holding its breath for up to 40 minutes. Long enough for danger up above to pass. At the surface, it refills its lungs. Giant reptiles still patrol the waterways. Crocodilians have hardly changed since their ancestors hunted dinosaurs. Talons above and teeth below. For now, the treetops seem a safer bet. Most of the babies have survived their crossing and arrive en masse to explore the mainland. The 
jungle is a strange world, full of new challenges and unknown dangers. Now, more than ever, keeping together is crucial. Instinct drives them on in search of food and shelter. From fossil tracks, we know that herds of huge plant-eating dinosaurs once followed in each other's footsteps, much like this. There are endless curiosities along the way. But the hungry babies haven't got time for too many distractions. They've got to head onwards and upwards. They're amazingly sure-footed. They already have a set of climbing gear in miniature. Now, bright green is an ideal camouflage, but they still don't go unnoticed by this cold-blooded reptile predator, a vine snake. no more than 5% of green iguanas will survive their first year. After dark, the babies cool off and slow down. They have to stop for the night. They huddle together to form a creche. Again, the kind of group behavior we'd expect from mammals like ourselves, not reptiles. Their closed eyelids may still mimic open eyes, so they look wide awake and on their guard. The babies have survived their first night in the jungle, and as soon as they warm up, they must move on. The yolk in their stomachs that they have been living off since they hatched has almost gone. They've got to find a meal. Now they're entering the adult world in search of tender shoots and leaves. Encountering older iguanas can be to the baby's advantage. Although the adults play no direct part in parenting, their waste is valuable to their young. By feasting on droppings from their elders, baby green iguanas take in gut bacteria, and this helps kickstart their own ability to digest plants. Some scientists believe that baby dinosaurs once did the same. It could be one reason why prehistoric herbivores traveled in herds. Droppings are the only contribution to parenting that adult iguanas make. But the babies have developed an effective substitute. The security of being one of the gang.
They'll stick with their group for many months until they're larger and less vulnerable. But it will be five years before they look like this. In the mating season, adult males turn brighter orange and wave swollen jowls like flags to signal their desire. Now that early solidarity is long forgotten. It's each male for himself. The biggest males establish territories highest up the tree, from which they nod and wave to catch the eye of passing females. They may not leave their prime perch for six weeks, not even to look for food. Smaller males are forced to make their pitch below their bulky peers. But a spirited performance can still attract a female. This female seems interesting. Each male has his own unique head bobbing repertoire. It's thought that dinosaurs had crests and colors too, so did they play this kind of mating game? The female turns her back on the smaller male. She is aiming higher. like this one at the top of his tree can mate with all the females in his territory. He may entertain as many as 13 in his penthouse pad, but even he can only manage one a day. For a female, mating marks the beginning of another arduous journey, all the way back to her birthplace. By burying her own eggs on the island, she can keep them out of reach of mammal predators. That's if she makes it past the reptile predators that lurk offshore. Crocodiles. And caiman. Perhaps duck diving will help her slip through. Other pregnant females face the same ordeal. This swimmer has been spotted.
Some females have to cover more than two kilometers to reach the island. But exactly how they find their way is still a mystery. Some dinosaurs are also thought to have returned to the same nesting grounds year after year. Once ashore, exhausted, she can take a breather, but she can't afford to lose much time. The race is on to grab the best nest sites. She's not the first here, and she'll have to fight for elbow room among much bigger females. This bare ground with no shade or vegetation is why the females come here. There's nothing like this in the dense jungle, and they rely on constant direct sunshine to help incubate their eggs. Claws designed for gripping branches also make good rakes and shovels. But it's much easier to dig out an existing burrow than start a new one. And nesting females can be just as fiercely competitive as courting males. will have to start from scratch. But the winner has access to a network excavated over generations, 25 meters of tunnels. Provided she lays her eggs at the right depth, this underground oven is preset for successful incubation at 31 degrees centigrade. A female lays on average 25 eggs. Some plant-eating dinosaurs are thought to have laid a similar number of considerably bigger ones. The largest known is 45 centimeters long. Vultures sweep the skies, and on this open ground, the females are on edge. But vultures are scavengers. They won't attack the living females. They're after their eggs. The nervous females quickly seal the crypt. Vultures simply stand and wait. And it pays off. They don't even have to do their own dirty work. A new arrival excavating her egg chamber accidentally digs up someone else's precious eggs. The vultures move in. The female may guard her burrow for a day or two, but eventually hunger forces her to leave. Now she needs her remaining energy to save herself. Just as when she was a baby, she must find food. In 
a downpour, adult green iguanas cool and grow sluggish. The pace of life slows down, but their job is done until next year. On the island, their young lie in waiting, as those baby giant reptiles did a hundred or more million years ago. The green iguana's sophisticated social life could give us new insight into how some dinosaurs behaved. So did young dinosaurs hatch out and mingle, forming social ties straight from the egg? Did adults live together? And even communicate? Looking at present-day reptiles could be a new way to unlock the past. Dark and erotic comedy next on BBC Prime, as anything goes for the League of Gentlemen. <laughs>